hello students today we will learn that what is a turbo machine and uh, i will also learn a very basic fundamental context of turbo machine that is eulers energy equation so a turbo machine is a sort of machine in which a moving fluid interacts with a rotor which rotates about an axis in which either fluid gives its energy to rotor or rotor gives energy to fluid okay for example a fan is a turbo machine because a fan there is a rotor of fan so uh, uh, the moving fluid is uh, air so air interacts with the fan so in the case of fan what happens the fan gives energy to air so it increases the energy content of air and air is the moving fluid similarly a uh, centrifugal compressor is also a sort of turbo machine because it handles the gas whatever gas it is handling and gas is the fluid so it takes uh, gas inside it and adds energy to the gas so that high pressure can be developed with that particular gas similarly pelton wheel is also a sort of turbo machine pelton wheel is a hydraulic turbine by the help of moving water water is acting as a sort of fluid in this case so moving uh, water interacts with the rotor of pelton wheel so it the moving water gives its an energy to the rotor of pelton wheel by this way the uh, fluids energy is transferred to the rotor of pelton wheel okay similarly kaplan turbine is there francis turbine is there steam turbine is there and gas turbine is there all these machines are sort of turbo machine so once more a turbo machine is a sort of machine in which a moving fluid interacts with the rotor the most general way to express the definition of turbo machine is a moving fluid interacts with the rotor and the rotor rotates about its axis and either the fluid gives its energy to the rotor or rotor gives energy to the fluid so remember in case energy of fluid is supplied to rotor means uh, fluids energy is supplied to rotor in that case it is called as turbine for example pelton wheel is a turbine because what happens the water goes inside with uh, some kinetic energy interacts with the rotor of pelton wheel and a part of kinetic energy of water is supplied to the rotor of pelton wheel therefore it is a sort of turbine similarly francis turbine similarly kaplan turbine because in these two machines also the moving fluid that is water gives its energy to the rotor and in case the rotor provides energy to the fluid then it is either a compressor or uh, a centrifugal pump or a blower or fan etc similarly your windmill is also a sort of turbo machine because in windmill uh, what happens uh, the moving air interacts with the rotor rotor is containing the blades interacts with the rotor and uh, the air gives its energy to the rotor so you would have understood that turbo machine is a sort of machine in which a moving fluid interacts with the rotor either the rotor gives its energy to the uh, moving fluid or moving fluid gives its energy to the rotor in case moving fluid gives its energy to the rotor then it is called as turbine and in case rotor gives its energy uh, to the moving fluid then it is called as either it, it could be a centrifugal compressor or centrifugal pump or blower or fan remember reciprocating machines are never considered in the category of turbo machine that you will learn when i am i will speak more about this topic see second thing is that eulers energy equation is very general way very basic uh, eulers energy equation is a very basic context to express the energy to turbo machine interaction see what happens that fluid interacts with the rotor okay so there is energy interaction between the two the fluid's energy is transferred to the rotor or rotor's energy is transferred to the fluid so there is some sort of energy interaction so that energy interaction can be generalized by this eulers energy equation okay and eulers energy equation is valid for all sorts of turbo machine keep this thing in mind okay so this thing also you have learned that eulers energy equation is the most basic equation in regards of energy transfer between the moving fluid and the rotor or rotor to the moving fluid and eulers energy equation is valid for all sorts of turbo machine so let's move ahead and one more thing remember this thing that the forces are developed in turbo machine either by newton's second law of motion or newton second and third law combined effect of newton second law and third law what is newton second law of motion newton second law of motion says that rate of change of momentum 
with respect to time is what applied force second thing is rate of change of angular momentum is equal to the applied torque i hope you would have this knowledge in your mind that momentum is in regards of linear motion and angular momentum is in regards of rotational motion so once more newton second law of motion says that rate of change of momentum is with respect to time is what applied force and newton's Uh, second law is apl also applicable for rotational motion which says that rate of change of angular momentum is what equals to the applied torque and newton's third law is what it is the action reaction principle which says that every action has equal and opposite action so we have learned over here three things that turbo machine is a sort of machine in which a moving fluid interacts with some rotor so either the moving fluid gives its energy to rotor in that case it is a turbine or rotor gives its energy to the moving fluid in that case it is either a centrifugal compressor or centrifugal pump or blower or fan etc second thing is it eiler's energy equation is the most basic mathematical derivation in regards of interaction of energy between the rotor and the moving fluid and it is applicable for all sorts of turbo machine second thing is the forces developed see when fluid interacts with the rotor then the whatever forces are developed are only either by newton second law of motion or combined effect of newton second law and third law of motion now suppose this is a rotor okay the most general way to express a rotor this is the axis about which it can rotate so suppose this is a rotor Okay, and this is the axis about which it can rotate. Okay, I am showing the axis. Now, what happens? That some fluid with mass m goes and interacts at some point of rotor, and which is at a distance r, r one, from the axis. And this interaction is tangential interaction. Okay, so m mass of fluid interacts at a point uh, which is at a distance r one. from the axis of rotor and the interaction is tangential and initial velocity of fluid by which it is interacting with the rotor is suppose c1 so m mass of fluid is going with velocity c1 and interacting the rotor the most general way i am talking about suppose how it is interacting there is a different thing okay just i am uh, want to say is suppose it is interacting with the rotor at some point which is at a distance r1 and interaction is in tangential direction so m mass of fluid with velocity c1 interaction interacting the rotor at some point uh, which is at a distance r1 from the axis now the same mass of fluid is going out of this rotor at a distance r2 you can see at a distance r2 from the axis it is going out with velocity c2 okay and due to this interaction the rotor is rotating with angular velocity omega okay so once more this is the rotor which is having some axis some moving fluid of mass m is interacting at a at some point of rotor which is at a distance r1 from the axis the velocity of the moving fluid is c1 when it is going inside the rotor and when it is leaving the rotor then it is leaving at a point which is at a distance r2 from the axis and it's again in tangential direction at a distance r2 it is leaving the rotor in tangential direction the mass is same and c2 is the velocity by which it is coming out and suppose this process is happening in one second means in one unit time okay and due to this interaction the rotor is rotating with angular velocity omega now can you tell what is the final angular momentum of the fluid we know this thing that angular momentum is given by mvr here m is the mass of the particle and v is the tangential velocity and r is the distance so obviously the angular momentum of fluid which is going out of this rotor would be m into c2 into r2 because angular momentum is going to mvr so over here the tangential velocity is what c2 so m c2 into r2 is the angular momentum of fluid by which it is coming out similarly the angular momentum of fluid by which it is entering inside the rotor is equal to what again we know this thing angular momentum is mvr and v over here is the tangential velocity so m into c1 into r1 is the initial angular momentum of the fluid so according to newton's second law of motion the rate of change of angular momentum with respect to time is what applied torque is so final angular momentum is mc2 r2 initial angular momentum is mc1 r1 so mc2 r2 minus mc1 r1 is the applied torque because i have already told that this process is happening per unit time so definitely this uh, change in angular momentum is also happening per unit time so this is what the applied torque is 
now one thing you know that power is given by torque into omega in linear motion power is given by force into velocity but in angular motion power is given by torque into omega so since the machine is the rotor is rotating with angular velocity omega so multiplying the torque with omega we are getting this equation in the bracket mc2 r2 minus mc1 r1 into omega now in case we multiply this omega inside and take out m common we are getting this power equals to m outside c2 r2 omega minus c1 r1 omega okay now what is r omega you would have in your mind that r omega is what v equals to r omega the c omega is the angular velocity of this rotor so in case we are multiplying omega with r1 what we will get we will get the tangential velocity at point r1 of rotor okay in case i am multiply see omega is the angular velocity by which this rotor is rotating uh, in case i am multiplying omega with r1 then i will get what i will get the corresponding tangential velocity of the rotor at that point similarly in case i am multiplying omega with r2 again i will get the corresponding tangential velocity at that point which is at a distance r2 from the axis so in place of r2 omega i am writing u2 u2 is the tangential velocity of rotor at a distance r2 from the axis about which it is rotating similarly in place of r1 omega i can write u1 u1 is the tangential velocity of rotor at a distance r1 from the axis so in case this m is 1 1 kg suppose 1 kg of mass or unit mass is interacting with this system per second we can use uh, remove m so ultimately we will get what this is what the power equals to c2 u2 minus c1 u1 this is what called as your eulers energy equation very simple to derive it it is only based on the context that the angular momentum change of the fluid with respect to time is what the the developed torque over the rotor is and in case we multiply the torque with the omega of rotor we will get the power so this is the relation which is between the energy transfer from the fluid to the rotor or rotor to the fluid so this is the most general expression for energy interaction of rotor and the fluid so this is what eulers energy equation now one thing is suppose the fluid is not interacting in tangential fashion then what we will do suppose over here i am showing that fluid is not interacting with the rotor in exactly tangential fashion at a point r1 suppose it is making some angle theta1 okay in that case we have to take the that component which is in tangential direction for example suppose fluid is interacting at a distance r1 from the axis but from the tangent it is making angle theta1 suppose that vector is ab c1 c1 is the velocity of fluid by which it is interacting at point b and which is making an angle theta1 so what we will do we will take the tangential component then c1 cos theta1 you can see this is the tangential component this blue line so c1 cos theta1 is the initial tangential velocity of the fluid similarly suppose the fluid is going out with velocity vector cd so and suppose the angle which it is making uh, uh, with the tangent of that corresponding point that is c is theta2 then cd cos theta2 this blue line is the tangential velocity of the fluid at the outlet so simple what we have to do in place of c2 we will keep the tangential component that is c2 cos theta2 this is c2 cos theta2 and in place of c1 we have to keep c1 cos theta1 and u2 u1 would be same so in that case we have to use this equation so i have talked about the eulers energy equation in a very simple way and the basic context of eulers energy equation so once more what is eulers energy equation it is saying that when a fluid interacts with the rotor of turbo machine then the rate of change of angular momentum fluid which is interacting with the rotor is what equal to the developed torque over the rotor and in case we multiply the torque with the angular frequency we will get the power this is what the eulers energy equation is thank you